going to discuss the uh, new industrial policy, right? So uh, why the name is given the new industrial policy? Because this is the this is the milestone from where from where India opened its door for open economy. So the industrial policy resolution 1991, it is also known as the new industrial policy, right? It is also known as new industrial policy because from here, what is happening uh, when Nasima Rao was our prime minister, then what is happening? This new industrial policy was launched by the Nazima Rao in 1991. It is also a, a very, very important step in the landmark of economic reforms of India from 1991 onwards. All the all all the uh, licensing, the licenses uh, that was done for the industrial license, it is reduced. Also, some amendments were done in MRTP Act, and the economy is open for the open for the investment uh, investment of private players and for a foreign direct investment right let's understanding first let's understand first the meaning of the industrial policy right the industrial policy means a rules regulation principle policies and procedure laid by laid by government for regulating developing and controlling the industrial undertaking in a country so industrial policies are the set of rules and regulation principal and policies and procedure laid by the government to regulate the industrial development and controlling the functions of industry in an economy right so these are very very crucial these the industrial policy is very important until and unless we have the government is able to announced a good and healthy industrial policy the aim of rapid industrialization and balanced economic growth cannot be achieved it prescribes the respective roles of the public private joint and cooperative sectors for the development of industries it's also described the industrial policy also described the roles of the private players right the government players the psus and the joint joint role of PSUs, right? It, there are some sectors, there are some sectors in which the private and government, they are doing the partnership. So they are running the business by doing the partnership. It also indicates the role of the large, medium and small sector, right? We have the large, small and small sector scale industries. So their role size also, also described in the industrial policy it incorporate the physical and monetary policies right we have the physical and monetary policy of the uh, of the government right the physical policy the physical policy is related with your government expenditure and revenue policy and the monetary policy is related with the finance all the the role of the role of the role of rbi in the economy to regulate the flow of cash also uh, the movement of foreign direct investment, also the movement of foreign trades, all under come under these policies, right? So the foreign capital investments also that come under the purview of the industrial policy. So the government attitude to our foreign capital and role to be played by the multinational corporation in development of the industrial sector. So multinational com company, the multinational company, they play a very important role in industrial development because these these industries, these, these multinational corporations, they set, set up units in different parts of the world and ultimately what is happening, they are bringing with them the sophisticated tools and machinery and latest know-how, then the objectives of the industrial policy, right? So whatever, what are the objectives of the new industrial policy? Accelerate the overall rate of the growth through industrialization to accelerate the growth of overall industrialization expanding the industrial base in relation to industrialization need of the country and generating the employment and reducing the poverty so so these to generate the employment opportunity and to reduce the poverty rapid industrialization expanding of industri industrial base in a country are the objectives of the industrial policy. The industrial policy also aims at preventing monopolies and concentration of industrial power, right? It's also aimed, the industrial policy also aim in, in reducing the monopolies and con concentration of industrial power in few hands. It means that 
in this policy also ensure that the others other entrepreneurs should also get the right to establish industries and to play a vital role in the growth of the india creating competitive conditions and encouraging the growth of the entrepreneurs right right it's the industrial policy also aim at creating a healthy competition environment and encouraging the growth of entrepreneurship then promoting the balanced industrial development promoting the balanced industrial development as you know that what is the balanced industrial development balanced industrial development means that developing all the zones like all the industrial zones also promoting the balanced industrial zones ensure that the those industries which are required in a rural area in the rural base to convert the agricultural product into finished goods it is related with the promotion of balance and industrial development promotion linkage with other sector of the economy right there is a coordination with other sector of the a of the economy like the industrial sector they will have to they will have to coordinate with primary and tertiary sector in order to to develop a balanced industrial growth in an economy and also assisting like the industrial sector the industrial sector what the industrial sector can do they can provide the latest raw uh, latest tools and techniques to the uh, agriculture and on the other hand agriculture the agriculture sector they can provide the raw materials and these raw materials are required by these industries and ultimately there is a relationship a balanced relationship and development of other sector is ensured with this mechanism so let's come to the objective of the new industrial policy right let's see the what are the objectives of the new industrial policy attainment of international competitions right then development of backward areas development of the backward areas is another objective of the new industrial policy increasing the competition with the indian indian industry efficient use of the productive resources full utilization of plan and generate the employment then re revival of the weak units right the objective of the industrial unit is also to 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 pick out the weak units and giving them the technical know how giving them financial uh, financial assistance so that they can they can come overcome their weak situations right let's see that the, the with the gradual liberalization with the gra gradual liberalization of 1956 industrial policy in the mid 18 the tempo of the industrial development is start picking up but the industry was still feeling the burden of many control and regulations for a faster growth of industry it was necessary that these these impediments should be removed the new governments by the narsimha rao which took Uh, office in June 1991 announced a pack of liberalization measures under the industrial policy on 20, 24 July 1991. So what was happening? The industrial reform was going on. The industrial reform was going on Indian economy, right? As you see, the industrial reform was highlighted in different industrial policies. So what what happened in 1991? in 1991 when narsimha rao took the oath of the prime minister of india the situation of indian economy was very very bad very very bad so what was happening there was there was there was problem in the economy various problem like the industry the in gdp was low right although we, also we have we are we are facing the problem of the rapid economic industrial development and ultimately what is happened that india was the the debt of the india was increased day by day so what is happening so it is the need of the hours so it is the need of the hours that the that the there should be reform introduced in india so keeping in view the narsimha rao when took the office in 19 june 1991 he announced the industrial uh, industrial policy which which encourages liberalizations under the industrial policy which was announced on 24 june 1991 the new industrial policy seeks to liberate the industry from the slackness of licensing system so what was happening before 
90 on uh, before 99 onwards what was happening the licensing system was very very result because maximum maximum industries maximum industry was under the control of control of the government and government has monopoly on maximum industries so in 1991 what was happening due to the slow industrial growth a liberalization globalization was adopted right so disastrously reduced the role of Uh, reforms took place in 1991 and, and in greater greater emphasis was given on liberalizing the industry from regulatory devices such as license and control so the license and control system was made very very liberal so when the license system was made very very liberal then what is happening more, more foreign foreign investors are in, in to set up their industries in India, enhancing supports to the small scale industries, right? Then we have enhancing the support to some small financial assistant and technical know-how was given to the small sector so that they can grow. When the small sector will grow, ultimately what Hello. Hello. Students, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Fine. Yes, sir. OK, that's fine. Let's let let's start the third point. Increasing the competent competitiveness of the industries from the benefits of the common man. So to increase the increase the healthy competition to increase the Healthy competition is also a, also another objective or the aim of the new industrial policy. So how the healthy competition can be increased in economy? It is increased by getting the latest know-how, by getting the latest know-how from the rest part of the world. So when the Indian government, when the Indian government make very, very simple licensing policy, then what happened? The path, the path for entry of the foreign direct investment of the foreign players were clear in the Indian economy. So when the when these companies, when these foreign direct investors, they they analyze the Indian economy, there was a huge potential, right? Because India is a very, 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 very large consumer market. So everybody was interested, interested in invest in doing investment in India by establishing their industry. So when they are when they are establishing and doing the investment, they have the they have the aim in their mind that they will bring the latest technology with them and latest know how. So what is happening in the economy when these latest techniques were used? Then the Indian the the Indian in the Indian previous Indian industry they will also have to modernize themselves. They will also have to update their plant and machinery. If they will not do that. Then what is happening? Then what is happening? Then they will not able to fight with these foreign companies. So ultimately, by by in by by bringing the foreign direct investment in India, a healthy competition in Indian industries start taking place. By 
the healthy industry is what is happening the consumer will get better quality of goods and services at reasonable rate ensuring running of public enterprises on business lines and thus cutting the losses so so also the public enterprises the public enterprises they are made to work on the modern mo modern guidelines and they are also made to cut their losses by adopting the latest techniques of production and they are training their human resource so that the losses can so that the unnecessary so the unnecessary wastes can be losses can be checked and ultimately they should cover up their losses providing more incentives for the industri industrialization of backward areas right so what was the what was the what was the need of the hour what was the need of the hours during the new economic industrial policy was to develop the industry in report area also because what is happening when we see the map of the india then we have a certain certain industrial zone like we have the industrial zone around ncr around the bombay maharashtra regions so what was the need of the hours the need of the hours is to develop the remote areas also the two tier cities the two tier cities which are not the metropolitan cities the two tier cities they are also to be developed in guidelines of the uh, in guidelines of the rapid industrialization what what will happen if more industries will set up in these backward areas then ultimately these these area will develop into into cities and big cities so they will bring the economic prosperity and they will also contribute to the national income of the india ensuring rapid industrialization development competitive environment also the another aim of the new industrial policy is to rapid industrialization and balanced industrialization so when the rapid and balanced industrialization was what will take place in indian economy then ultimately a healthy competition will be start taking place right the new industrial policy has made very significant change in the four main area the new industry the main feature the main area where the industrial new industrial policy or the industrial policy reform of 1991 made changes is the area of industrial licensing right the industrial licensing role of public sector foreign investment and technology and the mrpd act right so key so please keep in mind that the new industrial policy the new industrial policy had made make significant changes in four areas these four areas are the number one industrial licensing right industrial licensing as all of you know that what is the industrial licensing when when a industrialist set up a industry then he will have to take a license from the government right the that there are the different norms for different type of industries so they will have to clear they will have to take the license from the government before establishing a production you production unit right then 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 we have the foreign investment right then the foreign investment foreign investment all of you know what is the foreign investment foreign direct investment foreign direct investment means that giving invite Asian to rest rest countries of the world to invest in India. Why the rest countries of the world will be invest in India? They will invest in India because there are two benefits of investing in India, right? What are the two benefits of investing in India? The number one is that India is having a huge customer market, customer base, or India is a very very huge market. Their product will be easily easily. easily consumed in indian market the second benefit of indian market is cheap supply of cheap supply of the human resource all the labors right so very very cheap labors is available in india as you know that there is a huge population in india so in india the foreign direct investor they will find the cheap very very cheap labors so they will have to pay less wages to these workers or the labors ultimately they will earn more profits from india then we have another field that is called technology so the also very very significant changes was made and people one the industrialists was trained to adopt 
the new methods, new methods of producing productions and introducing new technology in production. It is done with the help of training. It is done with the help of with the help of importing latest techniques for productions. Then we have the Monopoly Restrictive Trade Practices Act. So in India, we have a monopoly restrictive trade practices. So in mono in MRTP Act, lots of changes were done in MRTP Act provisions. So the major four points of this policy are dis discussed below. So we have now let's see how these system, how these, how the how the changes were done in industrial license, how the changes were done in foreign direct investment technology and MRTP Act to make the industrial policy very, very liberal in India. So number one is abolition of industrial licensing, right? The abolition of industrial licensing. In earlier industrial policy, industries were subjected to tight regulations through the licensing system. So what was happening before the phase of 1990? What was happening? The industrial policy or the industrial licensing system was very, very tight in India, right? Though some liberalizations measures were introduced during in 1980s. In 1980s, some liberalization, some liberal things were introduced, but that positively affected the growth of India. Growth of industry is still industrial development remained constrained to a considerable extent. The new industrial policy abolished the system of industrial license for most of the industries. Under this policy, no license was required for setting up new industrial units or the substantial expansion in capacity of existing units, except for a list of related to the country's securities and strategic control, hazardous industries and industrial causing environmental degradation. So what was happening in 19 under the industrial policy of 1990, the the industrial policy, the industrial licensing was made very, very liberal and and the new industrial policy abolished the system of industrial license. Right, right. So the industrial license for everything was everything was abolished so except those industries except those industries which related to security national defense right those related with the national security or the defense these except these industry strategic concern hazardous industries and industry causing environmental degradation four categories of industries were there which for which the private partner, the private participant have to take the license and for rest of the industry, no license was required. So, so this, this gave a boost to the private players. So they give this, this features in the new, in, new industrial policy boost the, boost the, boost the moral, uh, moral and motivation of the private enterprises because the private enterprises now will not have to take any license from the government for their for setting up any new units or expanding their existing units except the four categories these four categories are related with the in the industries those are related with national security right all the ordinance ordinance industries all the industries which are involved in producing arms and ammunition for the country then strategic concern Hazardous industries, hazardous industries are those industries which are using very, very dangerous chemicals, right? Then we have another type of industries, the another type of industries, those which are, which are, which are harming our environment or degrading the environment, except these, all the license, no license was required in India to establish any industry in India. To begin with, 18 industries were placed in the list of industries that required license through later amendment to the policy the list was reduced it was covered only five industries right and security strategic concern that required compulsory licensing thus the industry has been almost completely made free from the licensing provisions and the constraint attached with them right so the licensing system were made very very liberal and 
no license was required no license was required to establish industries or to do the expansion of existing industry except those industries which are related which are related with defense national security or those industries which are harming our environment and those industries which are dealing with the hazardous in hazardous chemicals then de reservation of industries for the public sector right de reservation de reservations right the public sector which was conceived as a vehicle for rapid industrial development largely failed to do the jobs assigned to it most public sector enterprises became symbol of inefficiency and imposed heavy burden on the government through their perpetual losses so what is happening de reservation de reservation means that the de reservation of public public sector de reservation of the public sector means that the public sectors those industries which were kept for the public sector now the gates are opened the, now the gates were open and the de investment process is started de investment process means that the the public sector industries the psu the shares of the psu they are made open they are made open in the stock exchange to to sell their shares by the private part by the private players when these private players they are selling they are purchasing these shares then what is happening then they will they can improve the situation because these psu ultimately they are not working properly and they are increasing the burden on government because they are suffering losses right since a large field of industries were reserved exclusively for the public sector where it remained a virtual non performer except for a few units like the ongc the industrial development was the biggest casualty the new industrial policy seeks to the limit to the role of public sector and encourage private participation so what was happened in heavy industry also in heavy industrial sectors which was specifically kept for the government now now the gates are also in, open for the private players right the new industrial policy seeks to limit the role of public sector and increase the private sector participation over a wide field of industry with the view the following changes were made in the policy regulation public sector industry right the heavy industries the heavy industries related with the petrochemicals right related with the banking banking sector related with your mutual funds all the gates are open the gates are open for the private players also like the telecom sector so now from the 1990 after the announce of the policy of the industrial policy of 1991 the gates for heavy industries for setting up heavy industries like the petrochemical like the telecom sectors like the mutual funds and banking sector they are open for the private players also before 1990 what was happening these heavy industry were kept for the public sector right so now when the private enterprises when the private players enter the foreign foreign players entered in this sector what happened gradually the their situation changes their situation changes because they have good management system they have good management system they have latest la la latest technology with them the latest techniques of producing productions all these made significant changes in the heavy industries and gradually what was happening the industrial environment was 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 accelerated was accelerated in the indian economy reducing reservation of the public sector out of the 70 industry reserve for the public sector under the 1956 policy the new policy de reserve nine industries and thus limit the scope of public sector to only eight industry now what happened before 1990 17 industry was reserved for the public sector but after the announcement of the new industrial policy only the de reservation took place in india in, in industrial policy reforms and only nine industries were limited only eight industries was the the limit for the limit of reservation for the industries which was run by the public sector was reduced to 8 from 17 later a few more industries were de reserved and now the 
exclusive area of the public sector remain confined to only four industries now gradually what happened only four sectors which are defense atomic energy railway minerals used in general for the atomic energy only four sector only four sector these four sectors are atomic energy number 1 railways is number 2 minerals mi minerals used in generation of atomic energy these four sector are kept with the public sector and rest is offered to the private players however if need to be even some of these area can be opened up for the private sector the public sector can also be allowed to set up units in areas that have been been thrown open for the private sector if the national in interest so demand so what is happening only four industries only four sectors were kept under the control of the government and rest sector was open for the for for the private players and for the foreign players so that a balanced and economic development can take place a balance and rapid economic growth can take place in india so the industrial reform of 1991 the industrial reform of 1991 is also known as new industrial policy new industrial policy why it is known as new industrial policy because this is the turning point in the history of the reforms of the economic reforms of the india from 1991 onwards india adopted the mechanism of lpg that is liberalization globalization and privatization it means that the our closed economy our closed economy it open it converted into a open economy and it's open its door for rest of the world and for the private players to do business in india efforts to re uh, revive loss making enterprises right those public enterprises those public enterprises which are chronically sick and making persistent losses would be returned to the board of industrial and financial reconstructions ifr or similar other high level institutions creating for their purpose the the bfr or other such institution will formulate schemes for rehabilitation and re revival of such industrial units so what was happening the greatest the greatest turning point in the industrial if industrial policy of 1991 or the new industrial policy was that they have they have traced those public units they have traced those government companies or psus which was sick which was sick sick and which was which were making like regular losses in regular interval time so a board a a board a board board of industrial and financial reconstruction was framed and these the duty of the bifr board was to to rehabilitate and revive the industrial units the six industrial units which are run by the government then we have against one of the greatest features the one of the greatest features of the industrial reforms or the new industrial policies the disinvestment right the disinvestment in selected public sector right what was happening before 1990 1990 what was happening there was the dominance of the government the there was the dominance of the psus in heavy industries right so after 1991 or the after the announcement of the new industrial policy the dis disinvestment process was started taking place in the psus as a measure to raise the large resources and introduce private participation in public sector units the government would sell a part of its share holding to these industries to mutual fund financial institutions general public and workers so what was happen the sick units the sick units the sick units of the psus were traced and their shares was sold to the mutual fund companies financial institutions and general public so that a new new competition could be start a change in the management could take place in these uh, in these psus and ultimately these psus should turn into earning profit devices for this purpose the government of india set up a dis disinvestment commission in august 1996 which worked which worked out the modalities of disinvestment 
on the basis of the recommendation of the disinvestment commission the government sell the shares of the public enterprises so what happened when the disinvestment process started so a disinvestment commission was set up in august 1996 then those sick units those sick units which is run, run by the state government or the central government their shares were sold to the their their shares were sold to the private entrepreneurs private entrepreneurs so when these shares are sold to the private entrepreneurs then what is happening a partnership a joint partnership between public and private sectors was in was introduced in indian economy so ultimately when the when the management goes in the hands of the private players then ultimately these sick units they are these sick units they turn into profit making units then greater autonomy to the public enterprises the new industrial policy seeks to give greater autonomy to the public enterprises right the new industrial policy seeks to give greater autonomy to the public enterprises in day to day working so free hand is given free hand is given to the board of the directors of these psus to take the decisions right that trust would be on performance improvement of the public enterprises through a mix of greater autonomy autonomy and more accountability then we have liberalized policy towards the foreign capitals and technology right the inflow of foreign goods then we have made the liberalized policy towards foreign capital and technology so before 19 1990 what is happening the foreign capital or the foreign direct investment the flow of foreign capital or foreign direct investment was very very rigid in india so after the after the announcement of the new industrial policy the foreign direct investment or the flow of capital from foreign nations is made liberal the inflow of foreign capital and import technology were tightly regulated under the earlier industrial policy each proposals of the foreign investment was to be cleared by the government in advance whether the foreign investment was allowed the share of foreign equity was kept very low so the majority of the ownership control remains in india right but such a policy keep the inflow of foreign capital very small and industrial development suffer from the want of capital resources and the technology the july 1991 industrial policy made consciousness to increase the flow of foreign capital and technology into india which are following then relaxation in the upper limit of foreign investment right so relaxation in the upper the maximum limit of the foreign equity participation was placed 40% in the total equity capital industrial which were opened to the foreign investment under 1991 the limit was raised to 51% earlier what was happening only only a foreign only what is happening on a foreign company a foreign company can invest up to 40% of the total equity now the threshold limits was increased from 40% to 51% 34 specific specified more industry was added to the list of 51% of the foreign equity participants in some industries the ratio of the foreign equity was raised to 74% also so in some industries the government the in some in some industry the government gave his concern that the 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 for the participation of foreign equity can be raised up to 74% also foreign direct investment was further liberalized and now 100% foreign equity is per, permitted in case of mining mining including coal and lignite pollution control related to equipment projects of electricity generation transmissions transmissions and distribution of the ports harbor recent a decision taken for the further liberalize fdis include permission of 100% fdi in oil, oil refining manufacturing activities in special economic zones scjs and some activities in telecom sector also so the gates the gates for the foreign direct investment was opened in 1991 so there are the certain there are certain certain sectors which were open for the private foreign direct investment for the foreign players that they can make the 100% investment 
in these units these units are these units are related with the coal mining activities and pollution control related equipments those companies which are which are manufacturing the equipments to control the pollutions right then electricity generation electricity generation transmission and distribution developments of ports and harbors right so in these so this is the turning point so it is a turning point the the new economic policy or the economic reforms of 1991 are the turning point where tremendous in tremendous focus is given to attract the foreign direct investment in india then we have the automatic permission of the foreign technology agreement the new industrial policy the new, new industrial policy stated the automatic permission will be granted to the foreign technology agreement in high priority industries so the exchange of so the permission was granted by the government to exchange the technology to exchange the technology from the foreign previously technology agreement by indian company with the foreign parties for import of technology required advance clearance right before 1990 1990 what was happening if a, if a indian company want to take if the indian company want to purchase a technology from the foreign foreign then what is happening they will have to take a license from the government they have to get a clearance from the government now what is happening this system was abolished after announcement of the new industrial policy the delay the delayed the importance of technology and hampered the modernization of industries now the indian companies could enter into the technological agreement with the foreign companies and import foreign technology for which permission would be automatically granted provided by the agreement involve a lump sum payment of 1 crores and a royalty up to 5% on the domestic sales and 8% on the exports right also the exchange the purchase or exchange of foreign technology is bit very very liberal and no permission or clearance was required to take or to purchase the the technology from the foreign by the indian companies under the new economic policy then we have a very very significant change the change is change in mrpt act the restrictive monopoly policy act the restrict the restrictive monopoly policy trade practices act according to the monopolies and restrictive trade practices act mrtb act 1969 all big companies and large business houses which has a assets of 100 crores or more according to 1985 amendments to the act were required to obtain a clearance from mrtb commission for setting up industries units because such companies call mrtb companies were allowed to invest only in some selected in industries so what was happening before the 1990 what was happening the big industries those big industries which were having a uh, assets of 100 crores or more they will have they they were required to take they will have to required to obtain a clearance from the mrpt commission for setting up new industries so those industries which want to invest in big industries and whose investment is exceeding more than 100 crores they will have to take a mrpt mrpt clearance from the government before 1990 so beside obtaining a license they were also required to get a mrpt clearance this was a big impediment for the industrial development as the big business firm which had the resources for developing could not grow and diversify so what was happening earlier when the mrpt due to the mrpt act what was happening the big industry the big industries were facing difficulties in setting up the new units in india because they will have to take the clearance of from the mrpt in order to establish the heavy industries in the india so the industrial policy in 19 91 has put these industries on par with other abolished the provision of mrpt so after announcement of so after announcement of the industrial policy reforms of 1991 the mrpt license the mrpt clearance was was abolished for those those 
companies which are investing in in their assets a rupees 100 crores or more than 100 crores as which immediate mandatory for the large industrial house to seek prior clearance from the mrpd com commission under the amendment act mrpd commission will will concern itself only with the control of monopolies that restrictive trade practices that are unfair and restrictive competition to determine the consumers interest no prior approval for the clearance of the mrpd commission is required for setting up industries units large in business houses so after the announcement of the new industrial policy the the clearance from the mrpd was not required and a free hand is given to the to those investor which want to invest in india up to 100 crores or more than 100 crores so a free hand is given to the to the to the business owners to set up in india now the role of mrpd cap the role of the mrpd act was to only ensure that these these heavy industries they should trade fairly in india and they should not involve in any un un unpermitted trade practices in india which is going to hamper the consumer interest greater support to the small industries another area where the new industrial policy focus was the greater support was given to the small scale industry the industrial policy seeks to provide a greater government support to the small scale industries so that they may grow rapidly under environment of economy efficiency and technology upgrading a package of measures announced in context providing for setting up a an agency and ensure the credit needs of these industries and fully met it also allow the equity participants by the large industry in small scale sector exceeding 24% of the total share holding this has been done with a view of providing small scale and small scale sector and access to the capital market and increase their upgrading and modernization of the government would also increase the production of the parts and components required to the public sector industries and small sectors so also greater support is given to the small scale industries so that they can they can they can form a base in development of the big industries other provisions are the besides above discussion measures the industrial policy of 1991 announced some more steps to promote the rapid industrial development it said that the government would set up a special board which would establish a foreign investment promotion board so besides the above above provision that was announced by the new industrial policy the others are are establishment of the foreign investment promotion board fipb to negotiate with a number of international companies for the direct investment in india it also announced the setting of the a fund called the national renewal fund to provide the social security to reached workers and provide relief and rehabilitate the workers who has been rendered unemployment due to the technological change so a new a new policies is also announced under the industrial policy 1991 or the new industrial policy that is called the national renewal funds the, the main aim of the national renewal fund was to rehabilitate those workers which have which have left which was left their job due to change in the technology the new industrial policy also removed the mandatory convertibility clause under which the public sector finance institutions were asked to convert the loans given to them to the private industry in equity shares and thus become the partner in management this removed a big threat to the private sector industries as they were the always under the threat that their management and control would pass on in hands of the government and other financial institution so another aim another area where the new industrial policy done a wonderful job was the removal of the mandatory convertibility clause the mandatory convertibility convertibility clause was abolished right it was abolished so it it gave a feeling of motivations to the private 
players so the private players also the, uh, before uh, before abolishing of this clause what was happening there was always a threat in the minds of the private players that the due to the due to the mandatory convertibility clause what is happening their management can be taken by the government so the government can take their industry so this was also removed and in this way the industrial policy the industrial policy made tremendous recommendable reforms in india and from 1990 onwards the actual industrial the and actual industrial development or the actual actual balanced development of industries in india have started right so students can you hear me students can you hear me yes hello sir. okay today's lecture is over students right so uh, i have given you a assignment i have given you a 